I was a communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Nine years of walking a narrow, tortuous path with sheer drops to oblivion on both sides. Nine years of quiet, desperate fear that somewhere, sometime, I will take a false step and go plunging to disaster. Nine bitter, lonely years with my own life a cheap pawn in a great international chess game between the forces of freedom and the forces of enslavement. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabatic, Undercover Man. as Matt Savetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Courier of Disaster. Speeding along U.S. Highway Number 1, a hundred miles out of Washington, D.C. Speeding toward New York City and disaster. Beside me in the car, Comrade Smith watches my every move. <laughs> We're making good time, Svetik. Good time. A hundred miles out of Washington, a hundred and thirty more to New York. The car is like a prison. The speedometer steady like the sights in a gun. And no way to stop it. No way to get out. No way to get to a telephone. Over and over in my mind, I review the steps that brought me to this point, to this point of no escape. Over and over, I try to find some way out. Nothing. Nothing. It's hard to believe it began just 24 hours ago when Comrade Revchenko, my cell leader, called me to local party headquarters. You have it memorized, Comrade Sovetic? The name of the girl... Yeah, car, Gladys Fluring. The hotel in Washington? The Belmont, room 616. The time? 8.30. Good. Any questions? Yes. This is courier work. We have specialists trained for this work. Why take me? This job requires the single talent of being able to give the impression that you're anything but a courier. And since you've never done it before, you've been chosen. All right. I board the plane here and go to Washington. I arrive tonight. Contact Gladys Fluring, and she will give me further instructions. Instructions and a package. What is this package, Comrade Revchenko? Must be something pretty important, huh? Important enough, Sovetic, so that even I don't know what it is. Important enough so that our regular courier system is being bypassed. Well, then, I'll just have to pack a few things. You won't I... have time. I've got to take some clothes. You've got to do nothing but go to the airport now with me. At the airport, he waves goodbye to me just like a friend waving goodbye to a friend. I hold up my end of the act and wave back, and we take off. In Washington, after making sure I'm not being watched or followed, I duck into a phone booth and dial my FBI contact. O'Driscoll. Oh, O'Driscoll, oh, this is Red. Hi, Red. How are things? Things are looking up. Matt, how are you? Well, I'm not sure, Johnny. Where are you calling from? I'm right here in Washington. Well, what are you doing here? Courier work. I'm 
Matt, that's great. Where are you going? I don't know. Well, maybe I do. Uh, but we'd better not discuss this on the phone, Matt. Uh, can you meet me in Don's lunchroom at the corner of 6th and East Street? It'll have to be quick. In ten minutes. The last booth on the left. Right. <laughs> Good to see you, Matt. Sit down. Uh, what did you mean on the phone, Odrisco, when you said maybe you know where I'm going? Who's your contact here in Washington? The girl by the name of Gladys Fluring. Oh. Huh? Then you're going to New York. You know her? Sure. She's a sitting duck for us, but we let her operate like a decoy so we can bag the rest of the flock. We've been trying to bust open their courier system for a long time. A few nibbles around the edges is the best we've been able to do. But we want is a lead to the top man in New York. This may be it. You know a lot more than I do, Johnny. I've got an appointment with this Gladys Fluring at 8.30. She's got some microfilm, Matt. Important. Yeah, so I thought. Carry through. You'll be able to lead us to the New York contact. I hope. You know what the microfilm is? I don't worry about it. It's only half the story. No good by itself. Then I'm to go through with my assignment. All the way through. Don't worry. We'll be on your tail. The microfilm is important but only with the other half. And we don't know where it is, or if they have it. Whatever happens, go through with your mission. Look, if, if something comes up and I can't reach you... Don't worry you... about it. We'll have a man at the railroad station, another one at the bus depot, and a third at the airport. All right, Johnny. Luck, Matt. And remember, no matter what happens, follow through with your part. No improvising. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Looking for a room, six sixteen. Yes, Miss I... Gladys Flooring. Yes, you're Gladys Flooring. You disappointed? No, oh no. And are you Philip, George, Charles? No, <laughs> not Tom, Dick, or Harry either. <laughs> oh, then who are you, friend? Your slave, Miss Floring. Matt Savetic. <laughs> Come in, comrade. You're on time, precisely. You, uh, you have my instructions? Oh, of course. Business first. I have something to deliver to you. Here. Hmm, such a tiny package to be so important. This is all? For the moment. You're to wait here. Well, I can think of no pleasanter occupation. What am I going to do with this package? Put it in your pocket. You're to deliver it. To whom? I don't know. Come on. Sit down, comrade. Comrade Svetik, the party's always right, huh? Mm -hmm. The party says if we find uh, friends within our ranks, so much the better. Hooray for the party. Oh, it's so nice to be able to relax and be yourself with someone you trust. By all means, comrade, be yourself. Comrade Svetik. Oh, company. It's such a moment. Conrad Smith. Come in. Here you go. Mr. Smith, Mr. Matt Svetik. <laughs> well, it's good to meet you, Svetik. We have a job to do. Fine. What is it? Oh, a very simple job in easy stages. We take a little trip, deliver a little package. Simple, eh? <laughs> Depends. He said, we? Yes, I will accompany him. Well, my instructions were to... <laughs> Your instructions were to take instructions, eh? You are to take possession of the package until we get to New York. When do we leave? Now. Good. How do we go? Train, plane, or bus? By car. Car? But I thought You we... thought what? 
Well, I, I thought we were in a hurry. I thought driving would be the least practical way to get to New York. <laughs> exactly. Not to be expected, eh? <laughs> yeah. And that is why we're driving. Come along, Semitic. We'll go out through the basement. My car is two streets away. All right, Smith. Uh, we'll have time to pick up my toothbrush at my hotel. No. We will leave from here, together and immediately. But, but my hotel bill has it's to... It's been paid. Well, the party is very thorough. Always. <laughs> well, Svetik, want to say goodbye to Comrade Fleuring? Go with haste, Comrade. Return with speed. For a better tomorrow. Not one stop. 115 miles out of Washington. The FBI is probably still waiting at the airport, the railroad station, or the bus depot. There's no way on earth for them to know that we're traveling by car. I've been watching through the rearview mirror ever since we left Washington. No luck. No one is following. In this prison of a car, and that package burning a hole in my pocket. Beside me, driving, is Comrade Smith. And I've got to get to a phone. Our gauge is a little low, Svetik. We'd better pull into this gas station. Won't be another for 20 miles. I'll be glad to stretch my legs. Fill her up. I'll be right back, Smith. Uh, right back? I'm going to wash up. <laughs> Powder your nose, eh? <laughs> okay, I'll wait for you. Now, my only chance. The washroom around the side of the station... Right outside, a telephone booth. The call to let the FBI know where I am, what kind of car we're driving in, where we're headed. Long distance. Uh, long distance. I want to call Washington. Washington, D.C. What number in Washington, please? I want to call the... Wash up a bit, Comrade Spedick. Oh, I... I was just... No uh, wash basin in a telephone booth, comrade. What number in Washington, please? <laughs> what number in Washington, Svetik? to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sivetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI and the second act of our story. They say laugh and the whole world laughs with you. But they never heard Comrade Smith laugh. Especially when he just caught me trying to make a phone call when I was supposed to be in the washroom of the gas station. In my pocket is a package containing microfilm, and my mission for the communists is to deliver it to someone in New York. Now, here at a wayside gas station halfway between Washington and New York, I've missed what may be my last chance to get in touch with the FBI, or perhaps anyone else from the way Comrade Smith laughed. <laughs> There's no wash basin in this phone booth, Medic. What are you doing here? Well, my love life is no concern of the party. Your dreams are a concern of the party. Comrade Fluring is a party member. Certainly, you don't... No have... phone calls, Fedek. This work is new to you. Let's get back to the car. There isn't much traffic, Smith. Why don't you let it out a little? We can't afford to get a ticket. Delayed. Yeah, we can't afford... What's that sign say? You are now entering the city of Millersville, New Jersey. Population 17,000. Uh -huh. Look for a park on the right. A park? Yes. We're to meet someone at an evening band concert. Oh. Another chance. Maybe. Another chance to get to a phone. I've got to try. I've got to get the FBI back on our trail or they'll... Ah, uh, there it is. Now, if we follow this road through the park... Do you hear anything? No. Ah. Well, there it is. Through those trees, see? Yeah, yeah let's go. 
Look, you can take care of this without me. I'm going to grab a bite at that refreshment stand over there, and I'll, <laughs> I'll meet you. No telephones here to call Comrade Floating's medic. Come along. I'll lead you. All right, sir. Who's our contact for? The fellow who plays the tuba in the band. Okay. Come along on this side. Musicians are taking a break. Do we have a code word? Some identification? One word. Levchenko. Oh, here. Behind the bandstand. The man will be waiting. Ah. What is that instrument, sir? A tuba? That's right. It's an instrument that has always fascinated me. Can I offer you a cigarette? Thanks. Got a light? No. But Revchenko has. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, we'd better go over behind that tree out of the wind. You uh, have the package? Where's yours? But I can't. It. Show him, comrade. Hmm. Look like two peas out of a pod, don't they? Give it to him. Oh, thanks. What do I do with them? Your instructions are, when you arrive in New York, go directly to the Newsreel Theater on Broadway near 42nd Street and find two seats on the aisle in the third from the last row. Third from the last. You'll keep an empty seat between you. And someone will ask, is there an empty seat for me? You will sit between you. You'll have both packages in your left-hand jacket pocket. The empty seat will be on my left, then. Right. The man will sit down. All you will have to do is wait until he removes the package from your pocket. That's all? That's all. Your assignment will be finished. <laughs> Simple, eh? Yeah. Well, the break is over. I got to pawn my lip again. Thanks for the smoke. Uh, let's go, Svetik. Look, Smith. We'll get to New York too late for me to call Gladys. I'll give her a bus from here, then. <laughs> no phone call. Remember, Svetik? Yeah, I, I can't understand your single-minded desire to telephone Comrade Fleury. Well, when you've done your duty... Yes? You, you think of reward, don't you? <laughs> Let's do our duty first. <laughs> <laughs> Why so silent, Sveti? Only another 55 miles to New York. Any more stops? No. No more stops until we get there. Yeah, nothing to do but sit back and relax. Relax. Just 55 miles from New York. 55 miles with the tires humming. And both halves of the precious microfilm in my pocket now. And no way to stop the car. No way to stop this whole business from rushing to its finish. Unless, unless something happened to Smith and I could dispose of the film. But that would tip my hand and I'd be of no more use to the FBI. Besides, my instructions from O'Driscoll were explicit. No improvisations. Go through with it. Go through with it. In that glove compartment, Smith, uh, pack of cigarettes. Have one? No, thanks. <laughs> ah, you are angry, Smith. Yeah, I'm angry. <laughs> ah, you need a little discipline, eh? Now, the first time I met Gladys Fleuring, I too didn't pay any attention to what I was doing. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's a party member. Makes your head spin, doesn't she? Shut up! Shut up? No orders about not talking, Smith, are there? No instructions, you and I can't talk. I suppose she has other party business tonight. Wouldn't you like to talk to her? Wouldn't you like to check up on her? Shut up, Smith. She's my wife. Ah, I thought so. The party uses her talents well. Well, you dog. Looking at her with your filthy eyes. Why don't you go back to her, Smith? Go back to her now. I'll keep on. I'll deliver the packages. Now, you listen to me. Listen to me, Smith. I am a communist like you. You can't trap me. You can't make me break my orders. I know you don't want to call Gladys for yourself. You only want to try to break me down, but you can't do it. You can't do it, do you hear? All right, Smith. Well, Ed, then we can go on. Now, no more, eh? No more stops. No more needling. 
Nothing, eh? Nothing. <laughs> Good. Now we understand each other. I think I have my problems. I think this is a problem. When the man who laughs sitting next to me, driving, has a problem every day of his life, a problem that eats into him and destroys his soul. Now we're through the Holland Tunnel, and still we keep on. There's nothing I can do. No way now to prevent the accomplishment of my communist mission. Ah, there's something about New York City, Svetik, that stirs my blood. Its hugeness, its, its greatness. It will be ours someday. Cut across 42nd Street. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Now, there's a parking lot there, close to the theater. We buy tickets and go into the theater, and my head spins. How to stop it? How to stop it? What to do? We sit down in the third from the last row, near the aisle, and keep a seat vacant. And I don't see the newsreel, don't hear the sounds. Got the pounding in my heart. No matter what comes, should I destroy the microfilm? Say I lost it, get up and run from the theater? What does it contain, this microfilm? Blueprints, specifications? I cast around and... Is there an empty seat for me? It's done. The hand fumbles into my pocket and takes out the two small packages. I can't even see this face in the darkness. And then, in a few moments, he gets up and leaves. Smith and I wait. Then we're out on the street again. Our mission accomplished. You gonna stay here in New York? I guess so. Any place I can drop you? I'm returning to Washington. Good luck. <laughs> good luck? Uh, we just had a lot of good luck. We've done our jobs. That is good, eh, comrade? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is Red. I'd like to speak to Hi, you. Hi, Red. How are things? What, Driscoll? What are you doing in New York? Matt, get on your bicycle. Where to? There's a tobacco store in the corner of 53rd and 8th. How long before you can get there? By taxi, 10 minutes. See you. So I didn't know Come in. Through here. The back. Well, Matt? Matt followed instructions. I couldn't get to a phone. Mm -hmm. We didn't leave by train or bus or plane. I didn't get a chance to call you. Yes, we figured that out. You said that microfilm Gladys Fleuring had was one half the information. We stopped at Millersville and picked up the other half. Millersville? Who was it? It was a tuba player in the band. There was an evening concert there. We'll take care of them. Uh, what use is it? Too late now. The packages were delivered. They're gone. I didn't dispose of them. Maybe I should have. No. No, Matt. Huh? We've got them. You've got them? Huh, Johnny? Now, we figured out pretty quick you must have gone by car. Oh, you knew I went by car? There's no one following well, We've had the license number and description of Comrade Smith's car in our files for months. Oh, of course. I didn't think of that. I flew here to New York, and we had the tunnels and the bridges covered like a championship fight. We spotted you when you stopped to pay your toll. Then you followed from there? Sure. And you followed us into the theater? Well, you were on your own after that. We followed the guy who took the seat between you. Oh. And he led us right to the spot we wanted to get to. They're down at FBI headquarters right now. You look sort of beat. Maybe a little relaxation tonight. A date. Uh... No, thanks, John. She might be somebody's wife. I walk down New York's busy streets alone, watching the friends, the couples, the normal happy people enjoying their normal happy lives. 
For me, there's no normalcy, no happiness, no peace. For me, there's only the emptiness of a friendless world as I walk alone. Turn in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews, friends. Ralph Waldo Emerson once wrote, Of what avail the plow or sail, or land or life, if freedom fails? Let's be sure freedom does not fail. The story you've just heard is based on notes from the files of Matt Savetic, FBI undercover man. Names have been changed and events modified for obvious reasons. Next week, another exciting adventure out of Matt Savetic's experiences as a communist for the FBI. So be with us then. We'll be expecting you. <laughs>